tonight, I just want to give you something really simple and really, really practical. Um, I've mentioned this particular quote before, but um, E.M. Bounds was the guy that wrote a bunch of books on prayer, and uh, he's famous for those books. But there's a book that he wrote that he's not known for. And the name of that book is called Satan, His Personality, Power, and Overthrow. It's an excellent little book. And um, it's, you know, it's not deep and dark like you, you know, if you bought a book like that today, you know, you'd, you'd almost be afraid to, to let your kids see it. But, but this book is not like that. It's very practical. And as he closes the book in one of the final chapters, he finally gets to the meat of where he's going. And, um, and he says, one of the ways to be victorious over, you know, Satan and all his onslaughts is to, quote, fill up and crowd out. He said, you know, the devil's always looking for a way in and he loves any place that you give him to work and he'll take any place that we give him. And he said, the answer is actually very simple. He said, he said, if you'll fill up, you'll crowd him out. And um, I want to, to look at some verses to, tonight. Um, I look at Proverbs chapter four. While you're turning there, I'm going to give you another verse. So you're going to Proverbs 4. But in Psalm 16, verse 11, David says to the Lord, Thou wilt show me the path of life. And um, man, that path, you know, there's there's just, uh, the Lord wants you to know how to walk that path. And uh, again, some of that stuff, there's just some really, really simple things about staying on the path. Um, Proverbs four, um, Proverbs four and verse 23, uh, again, for many of you, a familiar verse, it says, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Keep your heart, like guard your mind and your thoughts and, and, and the things you fall in love with. Keep thy heart with, not just with diligence, but with all diligence, because whatever gets in your heart is probably going to come back out. So keep thy heart with all diligence. Fill it up with the right stuff. Look at Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 28. Ephesians 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands that thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. And the thought there is, you know, he used to steal, and instead of stealing, now rather that person is now a believer and um, man, he needs to he needs to fill up with something. You know, um, that person when he was uh, lost, uh, he had lots of idle time, and in his idle time, he could plan to steal. You know, he could size up houses, and he could case places out, and he could he could look at who lived there, and he could watch down the street. And well, now he's a believer. Now he's a believer, and 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 the the thought is now. He needs to fill his time with something else. He needs to fill his time and his mind with practical, good, wholesome busyness. And so that he doesn't have time to even think about what he used to do. And what spills out. You know, the old saying goes, you can, you can plan your, uh, your, your actions, but you can't plan your reactions. And your reactions often reveal uh, what a person is full of um, or what they filled themselves with. Now, the Bible has a lot to say. And, you know, we're just going to look at a few verses. The Bible visits this theme over and over and over and over and over again. And, um, and it doesn't always use the word fill, but it gives the picture of that. Um, so let's look at Psalm 71, 8. Psalm 71. E.M. Bound said, 
A lot of your victory over what the devil wants to do in your heart, in your mind, in your life will hinge on you filling up and keeping him crowded out. Psalm 71. Psalm 71, verse 8. Psalm 71, verse 8. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. I, I think for, for most people, there, there might be some Christian on the planet that really, that really comes very natural for. But I think for most Christians, um, you know, uh, it, it would take a, a little bit of conscious effort to train yourself to do that. But he, David said, let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with honor. You say, you say, Pastor, is that really, uh, is that really um, legitimate to, uh, to think that way that we can train ourselves to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to look at several verses along the way. But I've got a book in our bathroom. You guys know how you have books in your bathroom? Most, I'm assuming most of you do. Maybe you don't. Uh, but there's a book we got in the bathroom, and it's by this Carlson guy, and it's a secular book, and it's called um, – it's about – it's he's written a whole series of Don't books. Yeah. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, okay? And he's written a whole series of books, you know. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff with Your Money. Don't Sweat the Small Stuff about this and that and the other. But what put him on the map? was a little booklet he wrote called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. This guy is lost. I mean, he is unquestionably lost. And he promotes a lot of New Age philosophy in his book. His book, uh, this particular book, the book that put him on the map, um, is got, you know, I don't know, it's got 50 or 60 chapters in it, and they're just little tiny two or three page things. And it's really about being positive and, and you know, and, you know, don't let this bother you and, and you know, train yourself to do this. And, and it's really all about... A lot of uh, very positive things, and and he stresses train yourself to get out of your negative habits. Now this is a lost guy. This is a lost guy. He says, for example, he said uh, he said train yourself to listen and not interrupt. Um, there again, some people are quiet by nature and they don't have uh, you know trouble with that. But but you you'll notice in conversations, um, I, I battle with it sometimes. I'll catch myself. You know, somebody will say something triggers a thought. And, you know, I want to say something. And, uh, and you know, there, there's some people that that they're just really quick to interrupt. And, and the feeling you get is they really didn't hear you out. They didn't listen to what you said. You know, you make people feel bad. And he says, he says, train yourself to let people finish their sentences and even take a deep breath, and, you know, before you say anything. He said, they learned, they, then you're listening to them. He said, actually, you'll find the stress level. The conversation goes down. He said, you become more of a blessing because people think, wow, they're actually listening to me. And there's a lot of benefits. This guy's lost. And this book is filled with this stuff. And he's talking to lost people. And it's all about just train yourself a little bit. Just work on it. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise. And with thy honor all the day long. Phil, man, you could crowd out a lot of things you shouldn't say. Let my mouth be filled. Look at Philippians 1. Philippians 1. Philippians 1, verse 9. <clears throat> Philippians 1, verse 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ to watch the next phrase. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory 
and praise of God. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, and here's the, here's the flip side of that. Romans 1 verse 28. Of course, you guys know the context. It's talking about how man descends from that, that place where he knows God to the place where he becomes a total reprobate. And in verse 28, it says, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetous, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, malignity, whispers, and it goes on. Go to Proverbs 16 for a moment. Proverbs 16. Fill up and crowd out. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Now, it doesn't use the word fill here, but the thought is here. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The thought is, be so busy with your hands, your thoughts, uh, your studies, whatever, for the Lord. He says, if you commit that to the Lord, if you're filling up, he says, your thoughts will often take care of themselves. Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. Look at Colossians chapter one. I know we're looking at several and, and we'll be, uh, probably won't look at too many more, but we're at church. We're not going to apologize for looking at scripture, right? Colossians, Colossians 1. I'm not trying to fill time. I just want you to see this. It, it, the thought and the principle shows up all over the place. Look, Colossians 1. Verse 9. Colossians 1, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You don't have to turn there, but if you go back a page in, back a few pages into the book of Ephesians, you'll find Paul prayed for the Ephesians, a similar thought that they would be filled with all the fullness of God filled. And uh, man, it just shows up everywhere. You'll, you'll see the words fill and filled and fullness and abound and continually and all the way. And it just shows up, shows up, shows up. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. You've got Kings and Chronicles and then you hit Ezra, Nehemiah, and of course... Um, Another amazing passage here, Nehemiah 8. The people of Israel gather into the, uh, the street that is before the water gate, and, um, and they get Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of the Lord, and they read uh, from the first thing in the morning till about noon. They read the book of the law. And um, look at um, verse 9, Nehemiah 8, verse 9. And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, that means the governor, and Ezra the priest and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. 
Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth because they had understand, understood the words that were declared unto them. Look at verse 9 again. This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. And in verse 10, he says, Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the, the thought that you see there is, um, man, he's, he's, uh, he's trying to encourage the people to rejoice. They've heard the, the book of the law. And, um, and man, obviously their hearts were tender and they were open to the word of God. And Nehemiah says, you know, really, he says today we need to rejoice. And the joy would push out the sadness. He said, you, you can't do both in this assembly on this day. He said, it's what's implied is it's going to be one or the other. There's going to be weeping or there's going to be rejoicing. And he was telling them to let the joy of the Lord fill them. You know, um, we need to fill our time with purpose and with godly purposes. You know how it works. Um, you know, and I know you're you're not, especially if you're a young person, you may not totally be in control of your schedule all the time. And yet you do have free time. Um, and I'm not saying you got to take every minute of your day, you know, doing something spiritual. I mean, uh, hey, your, your exercise is needful. Um, uh, man, uh, Solomon in Ecclesiastes said, you know, rejoice in your youth and and all that stuff. But here's what I'm saying. You've heard it said, if you don't schedule your time, it will be scheduled for you. And the older you get, the more you see that. As an adult, um, man, there, there's some things that if you don't, uh, if you don't, if you don't build some things into your day-to-day -day life, you know what, what's going to happen is somebody else is going to find something else for you to do. And they're going to, Something else is going to push in. If you don't, um, if you don't fill your time with some godly purposes, they're not going to happen. Uh, whether that be witnessing, or you know, uh, church meetings, meaning like revival meetings, uh, whether it be helping and encouraging somebody else. You know, if you're just if you're just waiting till you have the perfect opportunity, until you just wake up one morning and you feel totally refreshed, and and you just you just really don't have anything else to do that day, and your kids are all sleeping little angels and and everything is just hunky dory. And, you know, an angel flies by your window and makes you feel spiritual. You know, if, if you're if you're waiting for that. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Um, don't you find that there the list of things to do never ends? And the older you get, the worse it gets. You know, Vance Habner said years ago, he said, once in a while, you just got to run away from the job that's never going to get finished anyway. He said, it's never going to get finished anyway. He said, you might as well jump off the jump off the Ferris wheel for a little while. You know, we need to fill our time with some godly purposes. Whether that be, you know, studying, you know, a little bit, whether that be fellowship, whether that be praying, whether that be fasting and praying, you know, you're you're never just gonna wake up one morning and say, Man, I just I just feel like dealing without food this morning. Whether it be, yes, even your rest and your relaxing, you know, some people, you know, they they fall in the other trap to where, you know, they're they're going about, you know, you know, uh, 19 hours a day. And, and they just never rest and they never relax and they never get away. And, you know, our Lord did say to his disciples, come apart and rest a while. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is turn your phone off and take a nap. You need to fill up and crowd out, but, ma but make sure, 
make sure you're you're filling up with what's right. You know what is filling? It's 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 watering. It's it's feeding. It's feeding the fire. You know, um, if you're if you're going to fill something, you know, if we had a glass sitting here, and I, I thought about bringing one tonight. If you if you have a glass here, and you're going to fill it, something has got to be poured in from somewhere. Um, and and in our life, we've got to continually be doing that. Because there's always other things that are trying to crowd in. And if we're pouring in the right things, it helps keep those other things crowded out. Um, Now, I'm I'm just speaking generically, so I'm sort of all over the map tonight. And and I'm not trying to create a world of work for somebody. I'm not trying to do that. Uh, You know what I what I'm trusting is here that that I'll say something and you'll think, wow, you know that I need I, I need to do that. Uh, maybe it'll be um, filling filling your your private life with with some family time. You know, um, you know, you you can be in your house and uh, you can be there, but you're not really there. You know, and just because you're there, and Johnny and Susie and Henry and, and Billy and Matilda are all, you know, ripping around the yard, you know, that, that doesn't mean that you're, you're giving them any of your time. You know, you, you need to, you need to fill some of those voids or the devil will fill them. They'll find somebody else to hang. They'll find somebody else to hang up. They'll find somebody else to admire. They'll find somebody else. To have fun with. But if you can fill up some of that, you help crowd out the devil and you help block his voice. The devil says, your daddy doesn't love you. Your mommy doesn't love you. And the, and the kid will say, yes, they do. Say, I love mom, dad. Man, we have a great time together. And, and, and all of a sudden what you've done is you've helped crowd out that other voice. You got to fill up your marriage. You know, we our, our world goes a thousand miles an hour, and man, we understand all that. Um, but on both sides of the equation, whether it's the man's side or the woman's side, um, is there any filling going on? Man, you can live together in the same house, and you just sort of, you know, you get this thing where you're just sort of doing doing your your thing, and man, life is full of things. But um, um, are you are you doing anything to? Uh, to fill that, fill that, to crowd out the devil, to crowd out his voice. There's probably some people watching tonight and, and they would, they're alone and they're stuck at home. And, you know, they don't have a potential to get out and do things or whatever. But even if you're stuck at home, you know, you, uh, you still must fill up. Um, you know, people that are at home a lot, I, I don't, I can't speak for everybody, but you know, the, the computer can be a wonderful thing or it can be a very detrimental thing. And some people, you know what they're doing? They're, they're filling up, but what are you, what are you currently filling yourself with? You must crowd out. You must, if, if you're a believer, you must crowd out the devil. You must crowd out the negativity. You must crowd out the hopelessness and the faithlessness or those things will fill you by default. And as you plan, you say, wow, you know, I, I, I want to do some of this. You know, maybe the Lord's speaking to somebody in this room about something. As, as you plan and as you start trying to fill up, make sure you, you leave some room or you leave some flexibility to keep God on top because you know, the devil, he'll swing you to another extreme. You know, I'm going to be silly for a minute, but you know, here you are and you join the tuna tasters club and they meet two nights a week. So all of a sudden now you can't come to revival me. Um, you overfilled. Um, you know, parents do this with their kids' activities. 
uh, you know, there's there's um, parents that that they get their kids obligated. You know, they get them Monday night. They're going to this program. Tuesday night, they're going to this program. Thursday night, they're going to this program. And all of a sudden, something for God and the church comes up. Well, you know, Pastor, we can't come and, you know, Johnny and Sally, you know, they have this and that and the other. It's like, you got your priorities all wrong. You know, they can miss that for the Lord's sake. I, I laugh, and Pastor Peter said it out there in, in Montreal, uh, the special meetings, you know, a week or so ago. Um, there, there in Montreal. You know, those meetings went late. They were long. They were, they, there was more than one night by the time we were walking out of the church. It was 11 o'clock. And Pastor Peter said, you know, he stood up. And, and that church runs, they run about 250 people. And I, I loved it. He said, you know, please do not say, well, you know, well, Sally and Johnny have to get to bed tonight. He said, they'll survive. He said, they will rejoice someday that they were here. He said, you're given the Holy Ghost. I, every place we ever lived growing up, it seemed like we were 45 minutes from church. And there was many a night that we got home late. And man, I had to catch the bus the next morning at 10 minutes till 7. I don't ever remember dad and mom being worried about us losing a little bit of sleep. Keep God first. And that way you crowd the devil out. Don't let anything push God out. It should be the other way around. It should be God pushing the other things out. What is a person full of? Fill up and crowd out. What is a person full of? Whatever they are full of easily comes out. Whatever a person is full of it is near the surface. Okay. If I have a, if I had a big, you know, glass, you know, and it was full of, you know, iced tea and, and it was really full of ice. I, I did it the other day in the car. Um, I, I bought a cup of coffee and uh, man, I get in the car and the, the lid on that crazy cup of coffee, the, 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 the lady that gave us that cup, I don't know if she didn't look at the cup before she gave it to us or not, but the lip on the cup, I mean, it was majorly defective. And I'm there with this cup of coffee, and it is hot, and it is just, we're in the drive through And I mean, I take my first sip, and it's spilling on my hand, it's getting on my clothes, and I, I thought, what is going on here? And uh, do you know what that happened? Because it was full. Because it was full. What? When something is full of something, it readily spills over both in, in the good times and in the mundane times and when life shakes them and when life rattles them. Some people are full of good things. They're full of joy. They're full of the bright side. They're full of kindness. They're just full of, they're just, it's just good. And some people are full of bitterness and frustration and anger and negativity. And whatever they're full of, it comes spilling out. I've seen some people, I've known some people through the years that spiritually at church, if they were asked to do something in a public way, and, and of course at church, usually everybody keeps their dark side, you know, under wraps. Um, <clears throat> if they have one. And um, man, I've seen some people, their service, you know, uh, they would, they would do something public. They'd give a testimony, you know, they would gladly sing. They would, they would do whatever. But what you find out is, for some people, that stuff is really not about the Lord. And the longer you're in this thing, the more you see it. Now, some people it is. Some people love the Lord and it just it just shines off of them. But, but some people, it's not about the Lord. It's to make themselves feel good about themselves. It gives them a chance to feel spiritual, be superior. When, when who they are spiritually would never hold water with anybody that gets to know them. Why? Because they're full of something. And whenever they get bumped, whenever something hits them from that, you know, when that curveball comes out of left field, 
suddenly the fullness is what spills out. Some of these men, some of these ladies, man, they could preach to others, but they cannot control themselves. That's why Paul said, Paul said, but I keep under and bring my body into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. In Proverbs 14, it says this. It says the backslider in heart is full. The backslider in heart is full of his own ways. Proverbs 18, it says, he that is first in his own cause seemeth just. In other words, there's this person, you know, and 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 they've, they've got something that they want to champion. They've got something they want to get across. They've got, you know, uh, something they want to broadcast and and they're, it makes perfect sense to them. Listen to the rest of the verse. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. Um, his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. That might be a friend. That might be the preacher. That might be the Lord. His neighbor cometh and searcheth him. You know, they, they're just convinced, you know, that this, you know, and and uh, but the Lord will usually send somebody to, Make them think. I've watched. Uh, I've watched guys through the years. I've known a few guys that um, um, man. They just anything public, anything confrontational. They're in on it. There's a lot of guys that are drawn to our kind of churches, and, and ladies too. Ladies too, and they like they like the preaching that is very straight. They like it when it's, they like it hard. They like it, um, um, man, they like black and white. They like that. Um, but the question is, what are they full of? The, the question is, what are you full of? Because that's, that's really what makes all the difference in your spirit, in your testimony, in in the, in the battles of life. See, the devil's looking for a way in. And if you're full of the wrong stuff, he's, he, he, you're, you, you become a tool in his hands. A.W. Tozer said this uh, long ago. He said the first, now, now listen to the statement. You're going to, you're going to go, I don't agree with that, but, but listen to the whole statement. The first responsibility of the church, the first responsibility of the church is not to spread the gospel. You go, I don't agree with that. But listen to the rest of the statement. The first responsibility of the church is not to spread the gospel. It is to be spiritually worthy to spread it. That's why the Lord said, well, why did the, when did the Lord send the disciples out? When they were full. He didn't send them out till they were full. Full of the Holy Ghost, full of the right things. Look at James 3 and we're done. James 3. Fill up and crowd out. Fill up and crowd out. You know, the devil, he's he's always looking, you know, to, to um, cause trouble. Every once in a while, I don't know how it is at your house, but every once in a while something will happen and, and it'll be one of those days and, and, uh, <laughs> Somebody will we'll all be looking around. And somebody say, well, the devil's hanging around here somewhere. Fill up and crowd him out. Crowd him out. James 3, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruit. Somebody tell me, somebody tells me, tell me what is one word 
that describes the taste of fruit. Oh, yeah. Bingo. I, I knew. That's the first word. What is the, the? Hey, listen. Full of mercy and good fruits. You know, everybody's temperament's a little different. We're all wired a little different emotionally and all that stuff. But what you fill yourself with is going to have a huge impact on your day-to-day life, how you interact with people, uh, what people see both privately, openly, full of mercy and good fruits, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. He says to be full. You won't be sinless. I mean, it, it, that's a good goal and we need to, we need to shoot for that. Uh, John said, I write these things unto you that ye sin not. But we need to be full, full of good. And I close with this quote. George Mueller uh, said this long ago, and um, somebody printed this off, and I have this in a plaque in my office. George Mueller said, the first great and primary business to which I ought to attend every day is to have my soul happy in the Lord. Let me read that again. The first great and primary business to which I ought to attend every day is to have my soul happy in the Lord. Fill up, fill up, and crowd the devil out. Let's pray. Lord, bless this truth. Lord, it'll probably take some, a little bit of thought, a little bit of work, a little bit of thinking. Lord, I pray you help us. Help us to find the places, Lord, where we are letting the devil in. And Lord, help us to fill those areas up for thee. Lord, help us to be filled with the fruits of righteousness. In Jesus' name. I want to give you just a minute to, to pray. Lord, thank you for this truth. And Lord, I pray you help all of us, Lord. Help us here at Capital City Baptist Church. Lord, that we would be filled with all the things, Lord, that you would have us full of, Lord, that would make all the difference for thee. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.